In this video, we're going to review naming acids using the classical naming method. So how do we know if a compound is an acid? If they start with a hydrogen, they are always acids. And there are two ways to name acids using the IUPAC naming, which you see first. So if we had HCl, we could name it aqueous hydrogen chloride. Acids are always going to have that AQ because they're always mixed with water. The classical naming method uses some other rules, so HCl would be hydrochloric acid. This is how you would normally find HCl in a, a prep lab. So here are some steps for naming acids. So the first one here is when we don't have oxygen. So there's no oxygen involved. So up here we have no oxygen. Here, these are called oxy acids because they have oxygen involved. So you'll need to notice the rules for naming our oxy acids. So if we have the 8 ion, we get the ic acid. So chlorate becomes chloric acid. If we have the per 8 ion, it becomes per ic acid. So perchlorate would become perchloric acid. And again, you know that they're acids because they've been mix mixed with hydrogen. If you have the ite ion, you get the us acid. So chlorite gives us chlorous acid. And if we have the hypoite ion, we get the hypo us acid. So you are going to have to put those rules in your memory. So let's look at some examples. So in our first example, we have carbonic acid. So the ic acid comes from our 8 ion. So if you go and check your polyatomic ion chart, carbonate is CO3 and it's 2 minus. So you need to add the number of hydrogens as your negative charge. So because we have 2, we're going to put a 2 there for our hydrogen, and then CO3 and we always write AQ because acids are mixed with water. So again, the ic acid comes from the 8 ion mixed with hydrogen. So hydrobromic acid, so when you see hydro, that prefix, that is telling you that there's no oxygen because only our, our oxy acids will never have hydro. So hydrobromic acid means that we're mixing it with bromine, and the bromide ion is 1 minus. So in this case, we need one hydrogen along with our bromine, and then add the AQ because they are acids. Nitrous acid is going to be formed from the ite ion, because the us acid comes from the ite ion. So the nitrite ion is NO2, 1 minus. So again, we need one hydrogen, and then the nitrite ion, and that would be our formula. So some examples going the other way. So here we have to look at what ion that is. SO3 is your sulfite ion. So if you go and check your polyatomic ion chart, that's sulfite. So the ite ion gets us the us acid. So this is sulfurous acid. We don't have to talk about the hydrogen in the classical naming because by adding acid, that is telling us that we have hydrogen. So let's look at the second example here. So ClO3 is our chlorate ion. So 8 means that we have chloric acid. Okay? So let's just summarize. So if we have no oxygen, so non-oxy acids, you get hydro and then ic acid. So HCl would be hydrochloric acid. So those are our ones without oxygen. 
are oxy acids. I'm going to start with our 8 ion. 8 ion is going to give us our ic acid. So I'm going to use chlorate as my example. So HClO3 aqueous, and I just realized I forgot the aqueous up here, so we'll add that. So if we have the chlorate, ClO3, that's chloric acid. If I make it the per 8 ion, I get per ic acid. So the, chlor the perchlorate ion is ClO4, so if I make it HClO4, that would be perchloric acid. So if I go back to the 8 ion and I make it the ite ion, I get the us acid. So I would have HClO2 AQ. And if I get the hypoite ion, I get hypo us acid. So the hypochlorous acid would be HClO AQ. Now, let's just look at something here. So here's our 8 ion, ClO3. If you notice, to get to the perchlorate ion, we add an oxygen. The charge never changes, it's still minus 1. So perchlorate is going to be the 8 ion with one more oxygen. So if we go back to our 8 ion and we take away an oxygen, we get the ite ion. And if we take away another oxygen, we get the hypoite ion. So that is the trend for all of our ions. So if you know the 8 ion, you can figure out the per 8 ion, you can figure out the ite ion, and you can figure out the hypoite ion just by changing the number of oxygens. And again, the charge will never change. So that has been our review of naming acids using the classical naming system. I hope it has been helpful.